Hey guys, your favorite cripple here. So, day two at the Mayo Clinic today. Let's go through my day today. So, at 6.10 this morning, I went for what I thought was the diabetes test where they have you um, drink that nasty crap and you gotta come back two hours or whatever it is or half an hour or whatever and like they do yeah I thought it was all that no they just took like six bottles of blood for me and sent me on my merry way so I was happy with that I was like oh okay whatever that's fine so then from there we had time to eat actually so I was actually happy with that. Um, I mean, we didn't have much time, but we had a little time. Um, but I was just happy I didn't have to drink that nasty shit again. Because like I said, I just had that test done just like a month or two ago. And I don't have diabetes. Um, so then my next test was the sweat test. Now, um... I've looked it up online and got several different responses. Mom, will you turn that light on real quick? <coughs> the one close to the TV. I got several different responses of what... Oh, it's got to be the switch by the door. The switch by the... No matter how many times you push the button. <laughs> Go to the bed. <laughs> Um, I got different results. Well, according to this paper, according to this paper, it pretty much says, hang on, this paper was very misleading. Okay. It says, um, Okay, so, um, when I looked at the test online, because I didn't know that they gave me a packet that defined all of the tests, um, until today, whenever I got there. Um, the sweat test that I thought they were performing was this, um, electrical thing where they... Um, place this electrical thing on a part of your like leg or arm and it makes you sweat or it produces your sweat or makes your sweat glands produce sweat they collect your sweat whatever well this says that it's going to put you in a cabinet that's about um, six feet by like 12 feet and it's got a plastic side which it did um, and you'll remain in the cabinet until your oral temperature reaches 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or until sufficient information is collected about your response to the heat. Typically one hour or less. Now he told me 45 minutes. Now he's, this says a technician will continuously monitor, throughout, monitor you throughout the test. Now what happens is is they put you on a gurney, you're completely naked. They put a towel um, over you, like upwards, like a diaper, and then a towel over your breast. So you're otherwise completely naked. And they put this brown powder all over you. And you have a mask on while they're doing that. And then they take the mask off when they're done so that you don't inhale any of it or get any in your mouth. And they put these sunglasses on you because inside this cabinet 
is these two, looks like these two big oven burners that are these big infrared lights. And you also have a cap on your hair, which doesn't matter because you still get the crap in your hair. And what it is is your sweat turns the brown powder purple. Now, um, he tells me, uh, I tell him that I was very worried because with my tachycardia, um, heat makes my pulse raise very, very quickly. And I said, just standing up talking to somebody, I will start to perspire on my face um, and elsewhere. Like, just, I mean, I'll start to perspire, I'll start to sweat just standing up talking to somebody, even in an air conditioned room. Um, so he said, okay, well, then the test may not even take 45 minutes. So my thinking is, okay, they're just waiting for the powder to turn purple. So I should be in there like 10, 15 minutes. Um, and I, I keep insisting that he needs to monitor my pulse because I told him that I will, pa I will pass out if my pulse gets too high. Um, I even explained to him that I have to take a shower with a shower chair because the heat and the humidity in the shower causes my pulse to get too high. Um, that I've passed out in the shower before. And I don't mean like passed out, like slid down the wall. I mean like passed out, hit my head on the faucet on the way down, knocked everything down, like passed the fuck out. Okay, like KO, knocked out, I'm done, pass out. I don't mean some slight shit, okay, like, pass out, okay, and, um, it says on here, if you have difficulty being in a confined space, or have a condition that affects your ability to tolerate heat, or other aspects of the test, talk with your healthcare provider, he may suggest medication and or techniques to help you relax during tests, now, I told the technician this about my tachycardia, and I asked him if he could monitor my pulse. And he says that it may mess with the powder. And I'm like, you can't just put one of the things on my, on my finger just to monitor my pulse just to make sure it's not getting too high. And he says, well, if it gets to that point, we'll, we'll monitor. What do you mean if it gets to that point? You, are you going to stand there and watch me? Because I ended up passing out. I lost count after probably about six times. And he didn't catch it at all. He didn't know that I passed out. Actually, he made the comment whenever I came out that I, um, I took a nap. That I seemed so relaxed that I even took a nap. And I said, no, I passed out several times. Because you wouldn't monitor my pulse. I was very bitchy with him. I was not very nice at all. And he seemed like a very nice man. Just not very smart. Um, while I was in there, I was having trouble breathing. Um, so he gave me um, some oxygen um, to put on. But he said he couldn't open it enough to put it on me. And I said, that's fine. I know how to put it on. Just hand it to me. So if he can open it up enough to hand me that, why couldn't he have it open enough to fit the cord in there to have the little pulse monitor on my finger? Because it obviously got to the point where it needed to be monitored. Um, he kept me in there for the full 45 minutes. Meanwhile, every time I woke up, I noticed... I was dripping sweat. I mean, dripping sweat. When I got out, my hair was soaked. Um, I was, I mean, I was dripping sweat from head to toe. The purple powder in some places, where it was, it was caked up in some places. In some places, it wasn't even on there anymore because I had sweat so much. Um, 
So I was I was pretty pissed off. I was pretty pissed off. And I mean, he, like I said, he seemed like a really nice guy. Just stupid. Just stupid. Um, I, I wasn't taking a nap. I, I was passing out. And every time I woke up, I was starting to freak out because I was gasping for air and I wasn't getting it. And then I remembered I had the nasal on. And so I was trying to keep calm because I kept thinking I just need to make it through this test. Obviously, they think this test will help discover something. And it fucking better because I went through hell going through this test. So, if you ever have to do a sweat test, that's what it consists of. So, um, I was able to take a shower afterwards. And luckily they had this special soap because this purple crap was really freaking hard to get off. I still have some of it off of me. And actually, um, the other test that I went to go do, I mentioned that I was in the oven, and they're like, oh, so you had the sweat test, and I was like, yeah, and they're like, well, and they said, well, you did a pretty good job getting it off, and I was like, well, yeah, I scrubbed it off, and they're like, well, most people, you know, that come in after having it, they're still, you know, smirk looking, I'm like, no, I, um, I like to be Caucasian, I don't like to be smirk, or purple, whatever, um, I wanted it off, so I sat in that shower and scrubbed it off, um, so yeah, that was, um, it, it doesn't even say, um, what this test is for. Now, whenever I first, um, looked at this test, in one of my videos, you'll see that I was pissed off, because I thought he was testing me for cystic fibrosis. Because that the other sweat test that I thought he was doing, that's what that test is for. Um, so I was very pissed off because I thought he was testing for cystic fibrosis. Um, this is a whole different sweat test. Uh, they didn't collect any sweat from me. They didn't swab me. They didn't do nothing. I don't know. He didn't explain anything. He didn't nothing. Just... Okay, we're going to put this powder on you. We're going to put you in this box. And no, I'm not going to monitor your heart rate, even though you just told me that you'll pass out when you get too hot. Gee, thanks. Dick. So, yeah. That was uh, that test. And then right after I got out of the shower, um, I couldn't even blow dry my hair all the way because I was still hot. Like, I, I took a cold shower, and, uh, which hurt my muscles, but I, I just, I was just so hot, and then I blow dried just this part of my hair, you know, how I wear my bandana in my hair, so I just blow dried this part of my hair and left the rest, because I, I couldn't handle the heat. I mean, it was just, uh, no. So right after that, um, I had to do the EMG, the, uh, electromyography examination, which is, um, the first part of it, um, she sticks little sensors on different parts of me, like my feet, my legs, and then my arm, and, and stuff, and, um, she has this little, uh, metal thing that, uh, sends electric pulses, um, it starts off low, and then it gets more, more extreme, and it makes you twitch and everything. Um, it wasn't too bad. Um, it, it was, I mean, it was uncomfortable, but it, it wasn't too bad. It just, I didn't have any recoup, recuperation time from the time that I went from the freaking oven to that. So I was pretty wore out. So after she left, um, she did the first part. Um, I had to wait on the doctor for the second part. And I was so wore out and drained from the oven that uh, I have fallen asleep, and the doctor comes in there, and he comes in there, and he said, Miss Conway, and I said, I kind of woke up, and I was like, I'm so sorry, I was like, he was like, no, 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 you're fine, I heard you were, you were just in the sweat test, I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm more out, and he was like, no, I completely understand, keep in mind, I'm in a gurney now, and I'm completely naked, except for my bra and underwear, 
Um, and I have a blanket on top of me. And now he does the part where he sticks a, and this, I thought it was pretty cool, but it, it hurt at the same time, but it, it wasn't a, an extreme painful hurt. It was more like an ouch hurt. Um, it's a needle that has a microphone in it. And he sticks it in different places of, of like my foot, my leg, and my arm, and uh, my butt, and my back. And um, then he has me move that muscle. And it records the sound that that muscle makes. And it was really cool. Um, especially my butt muscle. <laughs> My butt muscle made the most noise. Um, my foot, uh, he told me, he said, this is going to be the most painful one. And he stuck it in my foot. And I was like, that doesn't hurt at all, actually. Because most of them, whenever he'd initially stick it, it would hurt. And then he told me to move my foot. And usually the first initial movement that I would make would hurt. And I was like, oh, that doesn't hurt at all. He said, okay, now bend your toes down. And when I did that, I was like, ah, okay, yeah, now I get it, yeah, that's the most painful one, and he's like, yeah, so, but then when he did my butt muscle, <laughs> he stuck it right in my butt cheek, and what was funny was, <laughs> I was kind of trying to make an awkward moment unawkward, I, um, I, I wear thongs, and, um, he had me rolled over on my side, and he just, you know, lifted up the blanket just to get to my, you know, my butt cheek. And I said, well, I guess I wore the perfect underwear for today, huh? And he said, he said yeah, I guess so. Um, and he stuck it in my butt cheek, and of course, I kind of, my butt cheek kind of flinched. And, um, you know, so then the, the monitor's making the noise and everything. And he said, okay, uh, flinch your butt cheeks together. And when I did it, it made so much noise, like so much more noise than any other muscle had made like it was so loud and just like I don't know it was just so weird that it was like I don't know my butt is loud apparently um he said it was normal but I was like wow I have a loud butt <laughs> and when he took it out my butt muscle kept <laughs> my butt muscle kept <laughs> so that was kind of the lighter moment of the day. <laughs> um, and then he did my back, which um, wasn't my favorite part because then it kept spasming, and that was not very, it wasn't very funny. Um, so then um, we were able to go back to the, uh, we were able to go back to the hotel. Actually, we saw the Denny's. And I got me some French toast, and I've been on, I don't know um, how much I've uh, mentioned this. I've been on this low-carb diet for quite some time. I want to say, like, two months. Um, in the past, like, week and a half, I've been off of it, uh, mainly because... Um, I kind of slipped one day, and then it turned into, okay, we're broke, and we really don't have the money to keep up with my low carbs. I still, I still, like, watch my carbs, but I didn't eat, like, low carb like I normally did, and then I was also like, okay, well, when you're on a road trip with the ability that I have to chew things, on a road trip, there's no way I can do low carb. So I was like, fuck it. While we're on this trip, I'm not going to eat low carb. It's not helping with the tachycardia. The whole reason why I went on the low carb diet, I got to move around. Oh, the whole reason why I went on the low carb diet, um, was because it was recommended, um, because, uh, for the tachycardia, um, for the tachycardia, I'm supposed to be on a high sodium, low carb, high potassium diet. Um, and since I've done the low carb diet before, I was okay with it because I, I mean I've done it before, so I knew how to do it. Um, 
so I mean it wasn't really that big of an issue for me um, but here lately I've not been on it so um, but I haven't had me any French toast since I got off my diet and we went to Denny's today and um, I lately I haven't had uh, I, I haven't ate I don't eat much even if I'm starving like I'll take like six or seven bites of something and I'm, I'm full and when we went there, I got two pieces of French toast, which is, I mean, they're, they're big pieces. I mean, so it's like four halves of these big pieces. And I hate, I even ate the crust, which people who know me, if you know me, you know, I usually don't eat the crust. I even ate the crust. I ate the whole fucking plate of food. The French toast was amazing. Their Denny's here is nothing like the Denny's in, in Clarksville, back home. I, you can ask Andrew, I refuse to go to Denny's back home. Their food is so nasty anymore. I, I refuse to eat there anymore. Um, it's just so nasty. This Denny's here is fucking amazing. Um, we're probably going to go back there before we leave. Um... I mean, it was only 12 bucks for us both to eat. I mean, it was amazing. Um, so anyways, yeah, I got me some French toast, which was like another highlight of my day. Um, you know, my butt muscle twitching and my French toast. And then we came back to the hotel and um, my mom and I talked about color swatches um, for the house. Me and Andrew are buying. Um, I don't know if you know much about that. Um, if you're friends with me or Andrew on Facebook, you've probably heard a little bit about that. Um, Andrew and I are buying a house. Uh, technically, he's buying a house. I'm moving with him. Um, but the first thing that we have to do is pick out colors for the front of the house. And for some people, I know I'm going kind of off track and I'll get right back on track in a minute. But um, for some people, painting is usually like, especially when you're on a budget, it's usually something that you wait on. However, we kind of have to do it right when we move in because the, re the little retaining wall that's out front is um, getting ready to fall out. And we have to fix that um, before the city cites us. And um, it needs to be repainted. So whenever I go to fix that retaining wall, that's like my number one project that I need to do and that I really want to do. I've been talking about it since we first viewed the house. And um, when I go to paint it, I need to know what color scheme I'm going to do the house. So, yeah. So we've been looking at color schemes and such. Um, because we also have to send it before we even paint it, um, before we even buy the paint, we have to send it to the historical society through the application and make sure it's okay that we paint it. So anyways, yeah, while we were at the hotel to stay awake, while we were relaxing, uh, mom and I were looking at color swatches, um, that Andrew and I got from the Home Depot, um. So, yeah, that's what we were doing. And then we went and um, got my MRI. And, of course, I had to take everything out. And I got a lovely souvenir. It's a denture cup. They gave me to put all of my jewelry in because I didn't want to lose my balls. <laughs> because the last time I went to go get an MRI, I almost lost... Um, my nose ring and one of the balls to my earrings and so I asked them if they had a container and they're like oh yeah we we have a denture cup we can give you and I'm like that's such a great idea <laughs> thank you and also um they gave me this nice little thing um since I came in in a wheelchair and I was using a cane even though I explained to them that I can walk on my own, it just takes me a minute. I am a fall risk. And Sarah, I thought you'd get a laugh at this. 
And I even told the nurses that this is a joke at back at home. And I had to wear this the whole time I was there. <laughs> and then we couldn't get it off. <laughs> Until <laughs> I even wore it at Walmart, <laughs> and then finally I got it off <laughs> while we were in the car. So I'm a fall risk. <laughs> I feel old. But yeah, Sarah, I thought you'd get a, a kick out of this, and I'm, I'm bringing it home for you. <laughs> and you're probably going to kick my ass. Just don't fall while you do it, because you've only got one arm to catch yourself with. Um, so I got my MRI, and let me tell you about this MRI. Um, I'm claustrophobic, and I hate MRIs. The past few MRIs, um, I learned how to deal with it by touching, once I'm inside, like, before they start, and they start to roll me in, I touch the top of it. And that gets me through. I feel okay about it. And I actually, I can close my eyes. I can open my eyes. I don't care. It relieves all anxiety with it, actually. Um, and, I, and I do just fine. Actually, the last MRI I had, I slept through it. Like, I just didn't care. Like, um, in the MRI I had before that, I just, I just laid there and listened to music. I was fine with it. Like, so I kind of got over my anxiety with MRIs. However, this one, um, I almost squeezed the, um, the, uh, emergency, <laughs> they give you the emergency ball to squeeze if you want out. There was, there were, there were several times that I wanted to squeeze it because of my anxiety. And I had just taken my anxiety medication. Um, because whenever she set me in, she of course put the, the little, cushion underneath my knees to make me more comfortable. Um, and then she hands me earplugs. Now most places they have earmuffs or they even have headphones that they pipe music through. No, not this place. And this is a state of the art facility, supposedly. And they hand me earplugs. Never have I been handed earplugs before. So I put the earplugs in and then once I lay down, I'm in this cuffed pillow, and then she puts these earmuffs on the other side, and they're so that I can hear her, so they're like little mini headphones just for her to talk through, and um, because of how dipped my back is, I have an over-dipped back, I asked her if she could put my knees up just a little bit more. And so she did. Well, I had my arms to the side because they were doing an MRI from my neck to my mid-lower back. Um, so I didn't want my hands in the way by putting them on my belly or my hips or whatever. So I was trying to keep them to my side. As she's rolling me in, my hands get tucked in. So I had to put them in. Like, this is how small it is. So, and then I go to relieve my anxiety to touch, which normally I get to, like, right about here in most MRI machines. This one was literally right here. Like, anybody bigger than me by 50 pounds would not fit in that MRI machine. Like, I, they must have a bigger one that they use for bigger people, and I wish they would have used that one for me, because this whole time, and it took an hour, because they had to do, they had to do it in different sections, they had to do my cervical spine, and they had to do a lumbar spine, and then they had to do, you know, they, and then everything, and then they had to do the whole thing in contrast, so it took an hour, and luckily, and even like once I, another thing was, is once I started to go in, my knees hit the top of the MRI machine. 
So I had to squish my knees down further to get into the MRI machine. I mean, that's how small this thing was. So I was afraid to even look up to see how far the tube was. So I just kept my eyes closed the whole time, which I normally don't do. Normally I keep my eyes open um, because it doesn't bother me. Like I'll close them or I'll open them or whatever. And I told her that I'd probably sleep. Well, the thing was so freaking loud. Now I know why she gave me the earplugs. I, I mean, I know MRI machines are loud. I mean, trust me, I've had a million of them. But damn, I mean, this one was freaking loud. And finally, um, she kept telling me, like, okay, this one's going to be three minutes. Okay, this one's going to be three minutes. Okay, this one's going to be 30 seconds. Okay, this one's going to be six minutes. Okay, th And then finally, when she came to give me the contrast, it was going to be um, 25 minutes. So I was like, okay, finally I can go to sleep. And I was able to get over my anxiety because I was thinking if I could just go to sleep, then I won't be sitting here anxious wanting to squeeze this damn ball. And... So finally, she said 25 minutes. I was like, okay, I'm going to go sleep and sleep through the rest of the MRI. The MRI. So after she gave me the contrast, I was able to go to sleep. I didn't even feel the contrast go through me. That's how fast I went, I went to sleep. Because normally, I feel the contrast go through me. I didn't even feel it. I was already out before she even got done pushing it through. So, because I was, I was exhausted. Me and Mom and I have, like, since the day before... We left. We've not slept more than four hours at a time. Like, and it is um, 7.30 p.m. here. Um, it's 8.30 p.m. at home right now. So, like, we're planning on, there's some kids when we, when we went down the slope. We'll probably go down and smoke here in just a minute. Um, or at least I am because my medication just kicked in. Um, I'm going to check because there were some kids down there. And I know my cane will give me some sympathy. Um, and they'll get the kids out of the hot tub for us. But we're not going to be able to relax in the hot tub with kids screaming and playing in the pool. Which, I mean, I have no problem with kids playing in the pool. I mean... By all means, let your kids play. You know, I'm not saying they should get out, you know, but I'm hoping they're done playing by the time I go down there and smoke. I'm going to go check and see if they're done. Because we are exhausted and I'm hurting just so very bad. And mom has been walking up the stairs and down the stairs everywhere she goes. She's been pushing my ass around <laughs> all over the damn hospital. And I'm telling you, this Mayo Clinic, let me show you this map, okay? The Mayo Clinic, okay, this is, this is the main building that we go through. Um, this is where we park. This is our parking garage that we normally park in, that we always park in. And um, these little blue lines are subways. They're underground walking paths. The red ones are uh, um, their skywalks, which is awesome because if I zoom out, you can see like the whole town, like downtown. There's underground uh, subways and skywalks, like, everywhere, to every building. Hotels, restaurants, the Mayo Clinic, everything. Like, it's freaking amazing. Hang on. There's, like, it's, like, blurry or something. I don't know what's wrong with it. But anyways, so zooming back in. So this is the, the parking um, garage that we m usually park in. And, um, this is where my neurologist office is in, this building right here. Um, so we usually go in through here, 
and go down here and then take the elevator up. And then um, some of my visits have been here. Well, today, a lot of my visits have been up in here. So, we've had to go all the way around and go through here. And this is all underground. And go through here and then take the elevator up to where we need to go and whatnot. And then come back here and then, um, you know, and then come back here and then go back to the parking garage and whatnot. And then, you know, so between these two buildings and this building and then this garage, you know, we've been going underground. I just thought it was so cool how, like, you know, we'd stand there and, like, all of a sudden I'd say, you know what, we're actually underneath the street right now walking to our next, and it, it doesn't seem like you're underneath the street. It just seems like you're walking through a hospital. Um... It's really cool, and if we wanted to, if we could find it, I don't know what floors they're on, we could take the, the skywalks, or, um, or they're called skyways, um, and, or whatever, um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool that all we gotta do, instead of going outside where it's freezing, Actually, today it was pretty warm. The wind was just blowing and made it cold. But instead of having to go outside, go across the street or around the block or something, I mean, we just take the elevator, go all the way downstairs, and then just follow the signs to the next building, and then just go up the stairs to whatever floor we need. I mean, it's, it's pretty convenient. It's pretty awesome. It's a, it's a really neat setup. But, yeah, we've been going back and forth through three buildings. Um, today, and, um, so that's our day today, she's been pushing me all, all around those places and in the parking garage, which isn't easy because <laughs> a lot of the times it's been uphill, um, so she's gonna have, like, buns of steel when we get home, she just said I wish. I think she's, I think that's what she's, uh, trying for. Um, so, um, they have me scheduled for, um, what is it, uh, is it Monday Mom, the, uh, pain thing? Is it the pain test? Oh, um, the autonomic test they had me scheduled for Monday, and then some more uh, blood tests, and then the pain rehab center, because he thought I was going through withdrawal, because some dumbass told me not to take my pain medication 24 hours before my visit. Yeah, I'm going to be in pain. And I'm in pain management. I can't go to another pain rehab. They'll kick me out of my pain management back home. So I'm going to try to get out of that and reschedule my um, LP, my lumbar puncture, for that day so that it's not done the day we're leaving. So anyway, so that's been our day today. Dealing with very nice but stupid people. Um, are you going outside to smoke? Okay. Well, I was gonna say I'll 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 be out there in a minute because I need a cigarette. Um. So that's been our day today. Andrew, I've been cuddling with the monkey you got me. It doesn't smell like you anymore. It smells like me. I didn't think that through. I should have brought some of your spray or something. Um, but the pillow that I brought still smells like you. I've been flipping it. Um, and of course the shuttle, like, they have a shuttle schedule um, that um, picks us up from the hotel and takes us to the hospital. And we were trying to do that instead of having to pay for parking. Which, we found out today that if we pay $25, we get a five-day parking pass. 
we would have found that out yesterday, that would have helped out. But, of course, that doesn't help out now. Because now we don't need five days for the parking pass. Um, but, we, um, were, we were going to try to use the shuttle, um, because to save on parking, but the shuttle doesn't run early enough because all my appointments are freaking at the butt crack of dawn. Um, so that's out of the question. So, yeah, that's my day today. I was put in the oven, and then I was poked in the ass, and um, then I was put in a really small MRI. Too. And now I'm getting ready to see if the kids are out of the pool so that I can go soak in the hot tub and hopefully not get too hot again. <laughs> but I've got to find a way to relax these muscles. Um, so, the, anyways, the, um, the neurologist office has been trying to contact me today and the dumbasses called me after hours and left me a message to call them and when I tried to call them I got the message saying that it's after hours and to call them during hours so they didn't leave me like an alternate number to call which I didn't understand why they didn't do that because now I can't get a hold of them so I don't know if they have results from something or what um, but as of right now I don't have any results from anything so, um, as soon as I get results from something, y'all will know. Um, I highly doubt that I'll get results from anything while I'm here, but if I do, then you all will know when I know. So, um, I think that's all for today. Oh yeah, more about this hotel. Our keys keep deactivating. Uh, at first, I thought it was because uh, I put it close to my cell phone, so I've been keeping it away from my cell phone. Well, mom's deactivated, and she doesn't even have a smartphone, and hers has not been anywhere near her phone at all, and hers deactivated. So then we go down to the desk, and of course, it's the dude that worked the other night that is not very sociable at all. He's not a very social person at all, and... He was like, yeah, we've been having trouble with that. Here, go ahead and take two. So now we have three keys. What the fuck do we need with three keys? So apparently that's a very common issue. And our electrical system is still a problem. I charged my phone last night, and it was charging when I fell asleep. And when I woke up, I had 8% battery. So... And I've mentioned it, I mentioned it to the second shift worker that our electrical things are messed up. And I told her, I was like, we really don't want anybody looking at it right now. But I just wanted to let you know, you know, when we check out, you might want to have somebody look at it. Because I really don't want anybody in here while we're here. Um, but, you know, you might want to have somebody check that out. But, but that might be a problem. And she's like, oh yeah, we'll, 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 have, we'll put in a work order. But the way she said it, she said it like that's a common issue. So yeah, um, don't ever say it's super eight. Um, I've actually, um, a couple people have told me, um, that, um, <laughs> and a couple people at the Mayo Clinic, um, have mentioned, you know, they've asked me, you know, where, where are you staying or, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, down at a super eight. And they're like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, I learned my lesson. And they're like, yeah, I wouldn't have stayed there. I'm like, yeah, I've learned my lesson. Um, and they told me some hotels. Well, if you have to come back, I recommend this hotel, yada, yada, yada. And the n number one that keeps coming up is the Hampton. And I'm like, yeah, no. Um, but the Hampton was also $20 more a night. So that's why that wasn't chosen. But it will be chosen if I have to come, but I'm not coming back up here. Um, if something else needs to be done, 
I'll either go to the Florida one or it will be done at U of L. I'm not coming back up to this place. These people are either really na there was one guy who was really shitty and really stupid, and then the other ones they're really, really super nice, but they're just really they're just really stupid. I mean they're just I'm I'm really afraid I'm really, really afraid to have this lumbar fracture done. I really am. Like I mean these people like these these people are really stupid. Like there there's no common sense here. And it's really scary. And I'm not talking about like the city. Like I'm just talking about the the people, the staff, not all of them, some most of the staff that I have encountered at the Mayo Clinic seem to have left their common sense at the door. I mean, they're really nice, just kind of stupid. So that really, really scares me. I, I'm going to have to talk with and meet the person who's going to do my LP before they do it. Um, now, the doctor that did my EMG today, he, I mean, he seemed nice, and he, he knew what he was doing and talking about, so, I mean, he didn't seem stupid at all, so, that kind of restored my faith a little bit, um, but then after my MRI, um, I guess because I had fall risk on me, and I kept telling him I can walk without my cane, it just, it takes me a little bit, you know, and I, you know, I have to hold on to a wall or something, I mean, I don't have to, but, I mean, it's preferred, um, you know, I just came in a wheelchair because I can't walk that far. I mean, if I did, it would take me two, two or three hours. Um, they did not want to leave me in the lobby to wait for my mom. My mom was in the bathroom. Now, at this point, I knew she was either in the bathroom or she went to go smoke and got lost on her way back and would eventually find me they would not leave me in the lobby to wait for her I'm 26 years old I can sit down in a chair and wait for my mom to come get me my mom had my wheelchair I had my cane I can walk with my cane just fine they had me go, I felt like a, I felt like a little kid. They had me go to the desk and call my mom. And I had to keep calling her. And then she walks out of the bathroom and she's like, I'm sorry. She's like, I couldn't get to the phone. I was in the bathroom. And they're like, oh, there she is. Da, 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 da. I'm like, I appreciate it. You know, I understand. You know, you're trying to be nice and everything. Again, I'm 26 years old. You could have sat me down in that chair. And I could have waited for my mom. I mean, I again, I appreciate it, but I'm I'm almost 30 years old. God, let's not let's not word it this that way. I'm 26 years old. I don't need an escort. I can I can sit here in the chair and wait for my mom. It just I don't know. It just there's some things that they've done. The main thing that pissed me off was the oven. Whenever he let me pass out several times. And he was like, oh, it looks like you took a nap. No, motherfucker. I kept passing out. And I kept telling you to take my pulse. That, that's what's wrong. I, I know that I've got a bit of a twang more than, more than you. And I know that our accents don't match. But I know you understand me. So, other than that, today was a pretty good day. We're just tired. Other than the oven, today was a pretty good day. We're just tired and exhausted and in need of sleep. So, we're probably going to go down and get in the hot tub and then come up here and munch on some cookies and Doritos and bad stuff. <laughs> And go to bed. So, good night, even though it's like 
not even really that late. Well, there it is. It's almost 9 o'clock there. Here, it's only, it's not even 8 o'clock here yet. But, good night, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.